generations have passed since the Greek philosopher Heraclitus declared that no man ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river, and he's not the same man. Even today, Heraclitus' wisdom ranks true within the hearts of countless freedom-loving Americans, despite the efforts of a resolute age-old enemy. I speak, of course, of climate change. It is a subject of this complex relationship that we devote this special to today, in order to investigate how this determined foe hath averted the will of our former allies, coasts and rivers, against our freedom-loving cause. Since the 1950s, nearly every American coastal site has experienced an increase in flooding, and in many of these battlegrounds, the rate of inundation is accelerating rapidly. These liberty-loving states are familiar to most American households. They are strategic zones, like New Jersey, Maryland, and North Carolina, and have borne the brunt of this assault year after year without relief. If we are to lose the Mid-Atlantic Center, Senior analysts question what is to happen next to our great democracy. It is perhaps unsurprising to discover that the enemy, coastal flooding, has involved itself in operations of civilian and ecological sabotage, contradicting the stipulations set out by the Geneva Convention. Chief among these violations is the regular advance against innocent civilians, most of whom were blissfully unaware of the dangers posed by coastal flooding before this conflict. The damages often come in a wide variety, but most frequently include the deterioration of a proud American infrastructure, the reduction of stormwater drainage capacity, frequent road closures along supply lines, minor flooding in strategic metropolitan areas, the erosion of shorelines, vital to the defense against future incursions and indispensable to the morale of a civilian population. And perhaps, most heinously, the increased flow of salt water into nearby estuaries and aquifers used for drinking water, subjecting innocent civilians to a higher risk of consuming harmful chemicals and deadly pathogens. These operations also pose a significant threat to the local economies and livelihoods. For instance, take a look at Little Jimmy. If the enemy is to continue advancing forward without intervention into Jimmy's hometown, more than 8.6 million of Jimmy's little friends are susceptible to relocation as a result of coastal flooding. Couple this with a projected cost of $1 trillion in damages, the future looks very grim for Jimmy. Thankfully for little Jimmy, the top generals in Washington have devised a plan that might just turn the tide of the war. Foremost among these bulwarks is the development of sea walls, large cliff-like structures intended to stall the enemy advance to a halt. Already, 14% of America's free-willed coasts are lovingly embraced by these strong structures, having completely thwarted any and all hydrologic incursions in their respective sectors. However, certain coastal sympathizers within the states have raised objections to the erection of these seawalls, claiming that they deflect wave energy toward neighboring properties, resulting in harsher repercussions, as well as deteriorate ecological diversity, depriving local flora and fauna stable homes. In response, an alternative to the mighty seawall has been proposed, one which addresses all these concerns, the living shoreline a sea wall composed of organic material designed to intercept the waves more naturally without endangering local wildlife. It seems, however, that the incessant forces of coastal flooding have already developed techniques to counter even our most steadfast defenses. Our foreign intelligence has gathered that mass campaigns are being undertaken by the enemy in an effort to undermine our defenses, eroding the ground beneath our sea walls. Truly, it will be a dark day for democracy if we are not able to counter these maneuvers.
While similar in the abstract, River Flooding, in reality, is a completely different beast to its nefarious sibling, Coastal Flooding. River Flooding is the more subversive of the two, often opting for deception, resorting to subterfuge, and relying on guerrilla tactics to further its agenda. Already, we see a greater magnitude of river floods across the strategic industrial regions of the Atlantic Northeast and the agricultural Midwest, threatening to disrupt the American war economy in an effort to paralyze the industrial sectors we are proud to call uniquely American. Futile attempts to further tighten its grasp on the American economy, river flooding has historically engaged in war crimes widely condemned by the international community. These actions are often justified as the means to an end, completely fair as long as it cripples the heart of global freedom. Despite being widely condemned at large abroad, river flooding continues to engage in these desperate acts of self-preservation, striking at the very foundations of American communities we hold dear. Among these tenets of American democracy, them includes The homes of peaceful civilians The roads used to ferry lollipops to inner-city orphanages Bridges in service for the indomitable American Navy Infrastructure constructed by the pioneering industrialists that defined America Crops grown to feed the enterprising people of this great nation And of increasingly vital importance the well-being of our loyal compatriots. With the possibility of interminable flooding becoming an ever-growing concern among the top military leaders of our steadfast nation, river flooding poses itself as a true danger to national security, threatening to debilitate the nutrient balance of the very soil we consider equitable to freedom itself. In addition, Larger, more frequent river floods have the prospect of disrupting ecosystems ingrained with the concept of freedom and justice for all, impairing the water's quality and every melting pot by inundating water treatment plants with sediment and contaminants, and in turn promoting the growth of harmful microbes to whom the concept of inalienable rights is simply a myth. For the War Department, it seems as if the solution to river flooding is a simple one. The installation of the newly minted Liberty Barriers has been proven to thwart the dedicated advance of river flooding in its tracks. And not only are the proposed Liberty Barriers an effective bastion against the imperialist expansion of river flooding, but also an inexpensive solution, requiring little investment but big payoff. Too many. The future course of action is simple. Eradicate the specter of climate change and its cronies, coastal and river flooding. Don't be fooled. We are in a tenuous, protracted war from which there can only be one victor. Climate change or the forces of international democracy. You decide.